Hey, what's up everyone and welcome back to my channel. In this video today, we're gonna be talking about that thing called patient care experience. If you're like me, when you started thinking about PA school and you saw the words patient care experience, your heart just dropped. I don't have time for this, right? So in this video, we're gonna talk about how to get this patient care experience and how to be competitive and why it is important. So stay tuned and we're gonna get into it. When I was trying to be the most competitive applicant that I could be, I wanted to focus on GPA. I wanted to keep as close to a 4.0 as possible. And honestly, I wanted to work as little patient care experience as I needed because I just wanted to be as competitive as I could with my GPA and then hope that my patient care experience was enough. Um, but it is super important. You shouldn't blow it off. You should try to get some patient care experience, preferably as close to like 2,000 hours as you can because for whatever reason, that's the standard or the cutoff or what's required for some programs. Um, you don't have to have 2,000 hours. There are so many programs that won't have a requirement, so get as much as you can. That's all I can really say. And it really is important. Um, I know my pre-PA self, when I was focused on other things in my application, thought that it was stupid. I thought that, you know, you don't need this stuff to go to med school. You might now, I think it's kind of changing, but I was like, gosh, I don't want to get patient care experience. I don't want to have to spend all this extra time, but eventually I stopped complaining. I manned up. Um, I, I got my CNA certificate. I was a certified nurse assistant, and that's what I want to talk about most in this video because that's what I know. There are just two things that you need to get out of this video when talking about patient care experience, and that is, is what I'm doing, uh, is it paid, and is it direct patient care experience? Because if you can do those two things with your job, that you are, that, those that's the perfect type of experience that you need. It's going to make you just as competitive as the next person. So there are some people that will tell you, oh, you have to get a certification. You really don't. If you can get a job where it's direct and hands-on, like a patient care tech or a, I know, a physical therapy aid, that's another one you can do. They're out there. You kind of just got to search for them, talk to family and friends, talk to people who have gotten into PA school, figure out what they did. You don't have to go out and do the extra school and get a certification, but talk to you about being a CNA. So if you ask me about my experience as a CNA, the first thing I'm going to tell you is that it is not glamorous by any stretch of the imagination, right? You are giving showers and baths, uh, bed baths that is. Actually, I didn't do too many of those, so I won't actually say I did that. Uh, but showering, feeding individuals, dressing them, um, activities of daily living, right? That's what you're gonna be doing. And while this is not a glamorous job, it absolutely taught me humility. It taught me how to care for another human at the most basic level. And I think that, I hope that that helps me um, as a PA student and in my future going forward, just being able to connect with other humans on uh, a direct level and, and have good bedside manner. So I think that's what taught me, the, that's what I learned most in being a CNA. Uh, just that humility. So I'll get into some numbers. It, kept, it took me about two months to get my CNA certificate. I did it over a summer between my junior and senior year, I think, or maybe my sophomore and junior year. Uh, I acquired about 1,300 hours. Um, the cost was around $1,500, I think. A medical assistant, EMT, um, those are gonna be a little more money they're gonna be a little bit harder to get. But honestly, your job and your position, you're gonna learn more than a CNA, I think. It's more medical, so you're gonna be doing more medical things, whereas a nursing assistant, you're doing more nursing things. And here's another thing. I was in a memory care facility, so essentially like a nursing home. I would highly recommend you find a job in a hospital if you can. Uh, you're gonna do a lot more of the medical stuff. You're gonna be seeing doctors and PAs and uh, nurses with their BSNs who are really smart, you're going to learn a lot from them and you're going to be seeing a lot more. That job can be difficult because uh, the hospitals, I did apply to a hospital job, uh, but all of the applications, they wanted a uh, year of patient care experience. I didn't have that, so I settled on a nursing home. So really, don't make patient care experience harder than it needs to be. Just know that you want to be paid in what you're doing. You want to be direct and hands-on. And if... Um, you want that certificate if you think it's going to help you uh, go through the extra schooling become an MA, EMT, CNA 
It's really whatever you prefer, uh, whatever you, you'll think you'll like in this stepping stone to becoming a PA. So that wraps up this video. Thank you guys for watching. I hope it kind of helps. Leave me a comment or message me on Instagram if there are any videos that you want me to cover. I would gladly do so. So thank you for watching again and have a great day.